Hey guys, we're the Wilsons, and we've had a lot of people ask us about our toy hauler slash RV thing uh, <laughs> that, that we've built over the past two years. Uh, so we thought we'd make a video and talk about it. Uh, we love off-roading, and we love uh, driving to off-roading. No, we don't love driving to events. Uh, <laughs> but you know, we can't always off-road in our backyard. So um, what we usually did was what a lot of folks do is we just had our truck on a trailer and we pulled it uh, with our Duramax and that got a little old because uh, I don't like to sleep in a tent yep. you just have to pee every 30 minutes yeah it's, it's you're into it's a long setup so um, she pretty much had enough and I think we were coming back from Roush Creek one of the one of the times and uh, we decided we we would come up with there we decided there had to be a better way so uh, we came up with a couple ideas um, one of the first ones I thought was really cool was a military five ton, big six by six truck. Yeah, you know, no. pull the trailer behind it and. Um, and what problem did that solve? Nothing. All right, she's right. There. It was just cool. It's well, a it, it's cool. a low it's a low startup cost, but uh, hard to get parts for, and not very good fuel economy. You still have to pull a trailer, uh, twenty four volt system. You know. Anyway, we didn't go with that option. We thought about a school bus, <clears throat> kind of chopping the back half off and having the front half be the living quarters and then the truck would still be exposed, but at least it would only be one set of wheels on the ground instead of pulling a trailer. Very true, and that, that's a pretty common um, modification folks do. They're not very, they're not geared very well for highway. Uh, and a lot of the school buses are pretty, uh, pretty beat up by the time they're available for, for private sales. Um, we also thought about a Class C motorhome. Uh, Which seemed okay to me. Right, but it costs more than our house, so uh, There's it, that. it kind of ruled that out. Uh, but what we did end up settling on is a International 4700. This one's a 1997. Uh, it is a 26 foot box truck. It was a furniture truck in its previous life. Uh, 20 years with the same owner, and he put 200,000 miles on it in 20 years just running furniture between West Virginia and North Carolina. So we thought it was really important to get a manual. Um, usually, someone who drives a manual kind of knows what they're doing, not always. Uh, also, the owner was also the operator, so that's really important. It means he he cared about what he what he drove around, and uh, we picked it up for just under ten grand. Yep. So um, it was about four hours away, and we made it about three hours home, and then we didn't make it anymore. Yeah, so that that was my introduction into medium duty diesel mechanics. Uh, ended up being a cam position sensor along with a lot of dirty fuel. So we carry two spare cam position sensors now. Uh, How many extra fuel screens? Uh, four. Extra fuel screen, Just two spare case. fuel filters. We'll get on that later. Anyway, it's been an awesome learning experience with us, so please follow us around and uh, we'll show you what we did to make this work. So a couple things we did to the engine was I've, I wanted to see my boost in my EGT. So uh, from True Glow got a couple gauges and plumbed them in. Also from KT Performance, we got the diffuser for uh, the old older 7.3 International Motors. Um, really any any power mods would help uh, this old tired motor. Um, we got a cell phone holder. Yeah, that's that, pretty yeah, cool. That's, that's pretty important because you need guidance. And, I installed uh, that. Very good. She did. She did a really good job. You did such a good job, babe. Uh -huh. There's a CB radio, which was in there when we got it. Backup camera. That's extremely helpful because this thing is a freaking boat. Um, there used to be a double seat right here, which I think is right back there right now. We'll show um, you that later. We got, I got her a, another air seat out of, uh, what, I think that was an old Peterbilt. I bolted that down to the floor, used the factory seat belt, and uh, plumbed the airlines over, just split them over. So she's got a good air seat too. Um, and the more we use the thing, the more we're going to customize the cab, but really not much changed in here. A couple cup holders, uh, air seats are super comfortable. I put in a stereo uh, so we can listen to uh, Lincoln Park Hybrid Theory on repeat for 36 hours straight. He's gonna have to sleep during that time, don't worry. Uh, one of the first things we did was this pass-through right here. It wasn't here, obviously. It was just the, the cab and then the chassis behind that. So her and I cut this out. There was a rear, there was a back window in here. Um, we removed that, I welded in some plates, uh, some dummy plates to fill that up. And then this is just the pass-through. Um, it's hard to uh, show you a picture of a hole. Yeah, <laughs> this, uh, this insulation comes down and magnets to the side just so we can climate control the inside of the cab without having to worry about back here. One. So we're really glad that we got a furniture truck. 
because of this massive overhang that it has, we can actually fit a full queen size bed uh, in the attic area uh, above the cab, which is great. It's extremely comfortable. Um, kind of moving back in the truck, um, the truck came factory with two 60 gallon fuel tanks, which were all rusted out. So I ended up uh, yanking, the, yanking the tanks, de-rusting them, coating them with some red coat, which was not a very fun experience, but it beats buying new tanks or getting some at the dealership. Which is why we didn't make it home the first time around. <laughs> yeah, it, we, this, has been a, this has been a learning experience. Uh, in order to make the truck livable, we had to have all of your, your house amenities, little things you don't think about, like your power converter, you need your toilet, your shower, your, your stove, and all those things, though they may seem cheap to kind of throw in together to make RV compatible uh, appliances would have been really expensive, really difficult. So what we did was we found a 1995 Sunline tow behind camper. It was completely destroyed. The roof had, had rotted out, the floor was rotted out. Most of the appliances were good. So we stole a lot of appliances and- We didn't steal them. We purchased the camper and then we took the appliances out. This is gonna go on YouTube, so we're not gonna say the word steal. Yeah. <laughs> we used, utilized- There you go. Um, like bandits, um, a lot of the appliances <laughs> out of that camper uh, to include windows. Super important, things we didn't think about initially, but we're glad that we got them. So there's a couple windows, there's one in the attic, one on the side here, uh, 60 gallon fuel tank. This, these are, this is the propane that we stole, not stole, sorry. Used. Used, whatever. Uh, we got from from that camper. Um, this truck uses air brakes, so I tapped into one of the air brake air tanks. Put a little female chuck here, just so we can use air tools or pump up tires if we need to. Um, so we have two 40 gallon propane tanks. The black water tank that was originally in that Sunline camper mounted up right here, uh, just behind that. And one really cool thing was a generator. Uh, this is the generator we've had for a little while, and I love being able to to weld, uh, being able to have the capability to weld when something breaks on the trail. So this generator does give me 240 volts uh, as well as 120, so we can power the appliances inside. The way I mounted this generator is it is mounted uh, up via an ATV winch and a little switch controller. So it's strapped up right now just for safety, but one flick of the switch, the generator drops down on the ground. Uh, we can unhook it, drag it out, and then we can power our appliances inside that don't run off 12 volts. Just power in, we're running power off the garage right now to charge the batteries. This was one of the door that was on the camper. Big dually truck. This is actually a little bit narrower than our original um, trailer that we were using. So it stays a little bit better between the lines. Obviously we're 13 feet high. So that changes a little bit, but not that hard to get used to for driving says the man who's been driving it. We'll see how it happens when I start driving. Yeah, you'll do fine. All right, um, storage. You can never have enough storage, right? So what I keep in this box, which I mounted up underneath, uh, none of this was here before. This was a, a truck reading box, one I got several of, is I keep my welder in here and um, a couple of miscellaneous fabrication tools and my welding tank is right here inside an eight inch PVC pipe that I mounted going left to right and just, slide the uh, the cap right there, tighten it down, and uh, welding tank stays there. Well, and that right there is his favorite tool. That thing right there. This yep. is awesome. Yep. Yeah. Little, little, it's a little Hubbard Freight light. He's slightly obsessed with lights. Magnets anywhere. You can't beat it. You do, I mean, you usually do most of your work at night anyway, right? So, um, need it when you can. This is the plug for the air compressor, which we'll go over in a second. And we have a regulator here for the air compressor. Behind this, don't want to, Waste time showing you, but there's a 20 gallon air tank that I mounted behind this box up against the rail. These, uh, these side fits just snap down and latch in place. So they kind of serve a dual purpose so that they keep this door shut and uh, kind of keep the air streamlined across. Uh, here's a hitch mount, hitch receiver that I welded in because I use a hitch mounted vise when doing a lot of miscellaneous fabrication. So carry the vise. I can slide it in, run a quick pin from the inside, and with my awesome light, thank you very much, sitting right here, uh, there's not much I, not much I'm not be able, I can't. So one of the first priorities was, how do we get the truck in the truck? Uh, so I built these ramps out of some C-channel and angle iron, 
uh, the first locking step is just a quick pin and I pull, twist, and turn, and it allows the uh, the ramps to fold down. And they obviously rattle a lot, so I run a strap across both ramps. So it's pretty quick uh, for me to get the truck in and out of, of the bay. Just open the gate, undo the strap, drop the ramps, unstrap the truck, and yeah, it pretty much idles itself out. Inside the truck, I guess for the back, uh, one of the we have here is four 5K tie downs that go all the way down through the frame. So I got good lateral restraints in the front and in the back. These are just kind of drive over fenders, if you will. Um, bent some tube up, mounted these in so that I would be able to drive over and clear with the front differential, like the spare. Uh, we have extra water tanks. Here's the uh, motor and pump for the air compressor straps. Before when we were using the trailer we would drop the truck on, slide the spare underneath the truck, strap the spare down, strap the truck down. It, it was it was just a fiasco pulling ramps out from the trailer. I'm sure most of you guys are very familiar with that. Putting so, doors on. Yeah, <laughs> putting doors on and off. Um, really like this idea of the truck being up in here out of the way. It's still strapped down to the floor, drives over these fenders great. Um, so just really one strap in front, two straps in back, and the truck can idle right out. So setup time is a breeze. Uh, what we notice a lot at, at off-road events when we go to places like Roush Creek, where the weather is usually not the best, is uh, if it's gonna rain that night, I'll just open the door and pull the truck in during the night. And then uh, in the morning, I'm starting the day out with a nice dry truck. So I don't have to worry about putting doors on or, or covering with a tarp or anything. So that was, uh, that was really pretty helpful. Further up here in the truck, of course, we got our spare mounted down. Is uh, mounted a couple lights around the outside and a vent. The vent there is to allow air pressure in for uh, the back of the AC unit. So our AC unit pulls from uh, air in the garage, cools it, and supplies it to that living area. Uh, mounted a couple cheap lights in. <laughs> couple cheap lights are on on the inside. Um, these cabinets, I keep spare parts for the engine of the truck. So a spare coolant, oil, fuel filters, rock screens, uh, spare fluids, spare cam position sensor, um, fuel pressure regulator, that sort of stuff. There's uh, a rare wild stuff. animal coming. Look. Turd. Intermission. So this back part of the truck is about 16 feet. So at 26 feet, we had another 10 feet in front of the truck to the back of the cab. Um, what I thought was really important when I measured out was I wanted to have room to keep our our bike. So our, we got a KLR 650 and I mount it sideways in front of the truck. So I'll just drive it up one of the ramps and- uh, You guys, it's super fun to watch him drive it up the ramp. Like super fun. I only wrecked once. <laughs> it's a pretty fun wreck though. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. And that's why we get a KLR because it just gets right back up. Uh, kind of like me. And it's dumb enough to try it again. So uh, it's always good to have an escape plan. And when we go to big events or something, it'd be nice to be able to put around with the bike also. So a couple things that we put into consideration and we thought of um, trying to cover our bases and uh, We've learned a couple things over the years, and this will continue to be a learning experience of what we need and don't need as we continue. So here along the driver's side, we have a couple more places for This storage. is the passenger side, my friend. If you're watching this and you're in England, it's the driver's side. No, it's still not, is it? No, it would be. The right side. <laughs> the right side of the truck. <laughs> that part's not getting edited. <laughs> So more storage. These under boxes are great. Um, keep a couple, you know, fuel oriented things. The hitch vise goes in here. Uh, it's just super quick and really accessible. Really like having things with weight down low. I don't have to climb up into the truck to get a couple of the common things that we usually use. But there's no light in this one. Yeah, because I get the light out of the, I have one right here. I, I think we need to go to Harbor Freight. Yeah, I gotta get more lights. <laughs> Uh, these are more uh, working on the truck itself. 
I have bud lug socket for changing the tires. Which we're not gonna have to do. We're not gonna do, not gonna have to do. A 20 ton jack for the truck, a couple things for draining the sewage, miscellaneous straps. Another thing we f we realized that we needed, uh, so we do carry now, is a drill powered pump for pumping, uh, refilling our fresh water. So we have a 15 gallon fresh water tank underneath the sink that we took from that Sunline camper. Uh, in order to refill that with, we, you saw in there, we have two seven gallon jugs, so there's another 14 gallons of fresh water that we have on hand. In order to transfer in there, um, just a little drill powered pump works great. I mean, you know, 90 seconds and there's seven gallons um, into there. So from the outside here, you can see access to the hot water heater. We have an outside auxiliary shower, and then here's uh, city water pressure if we were at a campsite or something to uh, to hook up water pressure. I don't think they would accept us into a typical campground. I'll see why not. We're just as big as a Class C motorhome. Because they're like fancy. Yeah, cowers are the wrong color for that. Um, I don't think I don't know if we mentioned we paid like 400 bucks for that camper. And then we sold it for 200. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, sold, <laughs> sold what was left of it, which basically a frame for like 200 dollars. So um, super economic. Uh, um, another window, a vent for the stove, an LED light, uh, just kind of a porch light. This is the door that was in that camper. Uh, went in just fine. And it's obviously really ugly. Your typical 90s technology. Um, these stairs, which have awesome grip. Good job, babe. Thanks. Well done. Those were we'll stick on. That. Yeah. Well oh, and with. staples. Yep, stick on and staples. Uh, great for wiping the feet. The, these stairs come right out and uh, they stow underneath just uh, in front of our gray water tank and then behind the fuel tank. No tools required. They just set up in some hooks and then a chain comes down and hooks right here. It's super fun because he designed this so that I could lift them, which I can, but um, it always happens to be that the truck is running and the exhaust is the exhaust right, right there. there. Yeah, so it's, it's a timed event. You have to make sure that you hold your breath. It's so great. You can actually practice scuba diving while you're doing it. That's great. Uh, we have a gray water tank. Uh, our shower and sink empty into this it is a 30 gallon white water tank. Um, nothing special about it. The gray water tank that was in the camper just wasn't going to work wasn't going to fit. So um, this one's super uh, um, common, easy to come by. If it breaks for whatever, I run into it, I can probably find a new. Um, when I'm tank. driving. Yeah, pretty easily. Don't say that. You're a great <laughs> driver. Just ask you. Uh, from, from the outside here, we have the furnace, which runs off propane and lower refrigerator access and uh, upper refrigerator vent. Uh, access from the outside the refrigerator runs off 12 volt slash propane or 120 volts so when we're going down the road we're using propane uh, to power the refrigerator also kind of get a, an idea how big this thing i think it's about 37 feet bumper to bumper no big uh, deal which is shorter than our duramax pulling a trailer uh, with our truck on it we're able to carry more obviously we have basically a house here with us and it is narrower too and we only have six tires on the road so a couple things to think about uh, when uh, we decided to go this route. My dear husband decided that I needed to be a part of this video too, so let's go inside. Your dear husband has the best ideas. Yeah, it's horrific. All right, well, things are kind of a mess in here, but we're packing for a trip, so we have... What trip are we packing for? King of the Hammers. Well, King of the Hammers 2018. Yes. Awesome. Um, so in here we have everything I could need to cook and pee as we're driving down the road. Because <laughs> those are my two top priorities. So um, come in here. We have full bathroom. Okay, see those wonderful lights? I just changed the batteries. Well, anyway, the light turns on. And we have a full shower and toilet. It's dark in here, huh? shower, toilet. Complete with toilet paper. <clears throat> Occasionally, yeah. Yeah. We have some storage space here. It's where we keep all our toiletries and some of our cooking stuff. Okay. On this side, we pass through door, which is great. Husband gets nervous. He can go through and check on the truck while we're driving. Make sure the truck is still there. Which yeah. is important to still have the truck. Yeah, and I can call him through, through there to go have dinner. Right. Um, stove, oven. I haven't tried the oven yet. Maybe we'll have to try that this trip. Maybe we'll bake some muffins. I'll make some muffins or some cookies. 
Um, microwave. Fun fact, when attached to the generator, this counts triple time? Extremely fast. Yeah, I don't know why, but it counts really fast. Yeah. Storage space, storage space, sink, nothing too exciting there. Um, this is the seat that he was referencing earlier. It came out of the cab area originally, but when we cut the pass through, obviously this didn't work. But we do have some storage underneath of here, and we actually have full seat belts on here too, so someday if we have passengers or kids riding along, they can sit here legally and safely. Awesome. This was just installed. We needed a little bit more storage space, so that's up there. I've got my pots and pans. I made these super fancy curtains. Yeah. They're those... see-through, so uh, need to change something. I don't see why, but I mean, Whatever. if we can see out when it's light outside, people can see in when it's light in here. <laughs> um, so in this box, this is a seat and I have a cushion. Where actually is that cushion? Unknown. Okay, well there's a cushion somewhere. Um, this is our, our eating table area, but underneath here we have... Go ahead. We have four ginormous batteries. Okay, Go ahead yeah. and talk about those. So these are, bulldo these are two bulldozer batteries here and two marine deep cycle batteries um, set in a... Awesome acid resistant uh, Tupperware container. Rubber yeah, container. big rubber main container. Uh, complete with fuses and a switch on the outside, which supplies 12 volts uh, to the rest of uh, the living area. These are wired separate from the truck batteries, which uh, are outside and below the driver's side seat. But right here, uh, I did wire in a switch. So right now we're in off, so they are separate. But for whatever reason, if I ever needed to jump the truck, or vice versa, we needed extra power for these batteries. All I got to do is switch this to on, and that connects the uh, the truck batteries to our um, battery cell here in for the RV area. All right, so we have our pass through here, and so that it stays a little bit warmer or cooler, um, we're able to just pull this down. And it magnets on the side, and so that will just stay closed and keep us from seeing, keep people from seeing in through the cab windows. Um, we have full refrigerator and freezer. I guess it's not full, but close to it. It's a large one um, with storage on top of that. We also, underneath the refrigerator, have um, a furnace, so heat, which is yeah. wonderful. Runs off propane. Yep, because in Virginia it's cold often, like right now. We also have AC for those rare occasions that we go to California and it's hot but that works wonderful we actually used that last summer that works wonderful um up here we have a full queen size mattress we just went and bought a regular mattress and it's awesome it's way better than sleeping on an air mattress um at one point it was more comfortable than the bed in our bedroom that's okay in fact <laughs> we have two um of these cabinets and they hold all our clothing but they also flip down um, and they'll need some more support when we get there, but they flip down into bunk beds as well So we could have little people sleeping up there um, We mentioned the windows from the outside, but I you know, you have to see my beautiful curtains. You did so good. I did so good job, well, babe. But, How about those lights? Uh, yep, so we have some lights here easy on off with remote the remote works better than actually touching them as you could <laughs> see earlier But easy on off um, Are you are you happy with? what your setup in here is currently. Absolutely. Is there anything you would change? We could be at KOH right now. Yeah. <laughs> that would be okay. <laughs> that would be awesome to not have to drive the whole way. Yeah. About 38. But uh, if we could just click our heels and be there. That would be super we'd great. we travel all the time. Yeah. Oh, we have insulation in here too. I don't know if you could tell. Our walls are silver. Our ceiling is silver. It's um, like living in a spaceship. It's awesome. Basically. It's literally bubble wrap, but meant for insulation. Yeah, it's, it's R6... Um, aluminum foil, basically bubble wrap. I got in four by 50 foot rolls and uh, it went on the walls pretty easily, just kind of stapled in. Uh, and above it just kind of helps climate control uh, the RV living area. Not the most sightly thing, but uh, we it just works. We need more flags to cover it. Yeah, we need more America. I don't know, we got a lot of America. <laughs> we got uh, a fire extinguisher. I installed the sign. I know well, you're impressed. Well done, dear. Show them the floors though, these are amazing. I think my dad said that they're oak, but they're like legit hardwood, um, really durable, not super clean at the moment. Um, it'd be beautiful in a house if we just polish them. Right. But that's not gonna happen. Yeah, they're about an inch thick, uh, so very sturdy to mount to. Uh, obviously went through it uh, to 
mount like the tie downs for the truck, but inch thick oak, uh, pretty great. Uh, power converter from uh, from that Sunline camper and a carbon monoxide detector uh, that should also pick up any uh, exhaust fumes from the truck itself. Wired in several 120 uh, 120 volt uh, outlets uh, just to power things when we have 120 installed. We do have uh, the level tester and the fan so we know how much. Right now we're still winterized so uh, we got good battery and all the tanks are pretty much empty and have uh, winterizing material in them. So that's that. Yeah, that's all she wrote. Uh, this this whole project is still a, a work in progress. There's a couple of things that I'd like to still continue to work on. Like uh, we want to install an awning, kind of like a cool RV setup, maybe a little bit better waterproofing and a hose reel for the air compressor. Just, just little things uh, that we'll continue to continue to work on and then by the time we have it finished we'll have to start over with uh with maintaining it i'm sure honestly by the time he has it finished is never i'll just get him started on a buggy project so he's busy with that you heard her whatever i'm good with yeah. it <laughs> yeah. so anyway that's it and babe do you remember the whole reason why we uh started this project because you have a really small bladder yep i'm gonna go pee i'll see you later all right Thanks for watching, folks. God bless.